Hello friends, welcome to Foxio Tech. Today we're gonna see one of the powerful tool for maintaining the balance and efficiency about our Kubernetes clusters. So what it does, before we jump into that video, uh, let's understand the problem, right? So as we understand uh, about our Kubernetes cluster, it's a growth and changes and it's crucial to ensure that workloads are distributed evenly across the nodes for optimal performance. However, it's relying solely on the static scheduling rules. So as every Kubernetes cluster, we do have a static scheduling solutions. If you are using a bare Kubernetes, like you may have a node auto scaling and it scales the nodes when based on the number of loads. And if you are working on the cloud aspects also, there is a lot of limitation on the site. And at last, if you see, you will be ending up with there is a lot of ideal resources. Why ideal resources are matters? Let's assume you are in a cloud solutions and you have running with the 10,000 pods and you have limitation per node there is only 100 pods should be there or 200 pods there will be a limitation based on the cloud provider and that may when you check there will be a very smaller pods running on a sub nodes and your utilization will be less than 30 percent so remaining 70 percent resource of the nodes will be completely not utilized well so by running such a load it will you will be ending up like a uneven resource utilization so some nodes will be overutilized some nodes will be not none of the things will be used at last it will be wasting the resource and impacting the performance on overall kubernetes cluster and inability to adopt so <clears throat> how to fix it so even though there is a default scheduling things what it does it will only take as new pods optimization it doesn't bother about existing running the pods so it will be impact us lot at last we will be running the multiple nodes and which is not even properly scheduled and the, there will be a lot of ideal resources so this either way it's costing us on the regular basis and also it's affecting our performance of kubernetes cluster right how we can mitigate this right so there is a tool called t scheduler it's automated runtime rescheduling tool. It's help you to overcome those challenges. What it does and how it works, let's understand. How it works, first of all, so it has a two major component. One is like a filter. What a filter does, it's a descheduler defines the filters to identify eligibility pods for relocation. So you can define, hey, if this is a criteria matches, this pod should be rescheduled. Some parts you may say like, hey, this cannot be rescheduled, but some parts we can able to reschedule it on regular basis, right? So those parts you can define it on <clears throat> either namespace level or what are the better way suits for your organization. You can define the filters. Those filters will be excluded. Please be noted. Those those filters will be excluded like static parts, daemon sets, and those already terminating. Obviously, the terminating we don't bother and the static parts also we should not and daemon sets obviously we can't because it has to running on each nodes right and once the filter is identified and then it defines the strategies what has to be done so these strategies determine when and how the pod should be rescheduled and it's not straightforward it has a lot of factors to be considered so first thing labor and time changes and pod affinity and anti-affinity violations and ex excessive pod restarts let's assume you have certain number of pod restarts if the pod is restarting this many times you should uh, reschedule to different node you can define it and node utilization levels let's say like the node is utilizing very low or is it over utilizing so there's both the cases you can define the strategies and also the pod distribution across multiple nodes you should evenly multi restrict distribute the pod across the nodes whether it's like a dumping into the single node or rather in it will be distributed in very vast very wide cases right so this is uh, how it works and what is the benefit we achieve by enabling this so you will be seeing the improved resource utilization this will ensures the balanced workload distribution and maximizing the resource efficiency so you may not see the ideal resource. you may see the ideal resource default 30 percent is acceptable 
but if it's a beyond that if your wastage is 40 percent or 60 percent we you need to rethink about your cluster and enhance the performance dynamically adapting the changes it will optimize the part placement for the better performance so in your number of nodes are increasing so obviously the api server will be pressurized because there will be a multiple nodes from multiple nodes gradually if you are reducing the one set of rules obviously the set of parts count will be reduced and the cluster performance also you may see it will be a little bit improvised and greater flexibility customize your behavior with the various filters and strategy meet your specific needs it will be very good for us like we can rotate the parts on regular basis to bet for the better performance it's completely automated integrated digital with a cluster auto scaler for automatic scaling based on the resource utilization so let's take an example before we concluding this video so imagine there is a pod is prone to crash and frequently restart with a descheduler and remove pod having a too many restarts options strategy enabled so once the pod restart exits the threshold let's say like a five as i said so descheduler automatically reschedule it ensuring the stability and efficient resource utilization so this will overcome if overnight if you are not working or you are not monitoring so obviously kubernetes is supposed to be take care but in case the pod is stuck due to some resource utilization whenever it's crossing the threshold about memory limit it will be keep on oam error you may get and pod get very frequent restarts until you come morning or someone triggers your on call you may not aware the pod is why it's restarting and it's restarted so this kind of solutions may help but again it's subject to based on your application but if some cases this may help us to exclude these options if the pod is restarting multiple times or let's say, let's say like you have a some pod with the critical data and that has to be rescheduled to different node this rescheduler will dc tooler will take care of it right so the conclusion is by automating the pod scheduling dc will help you to achieve improved cluster balance efficient resource utilization and optimization performance and reduced opt operational overhead and less manual interactions you no need to do anything manually and for the pod management and scalability and cost saving obviously when you are running with the very limited resource and well managed uh, solution like dc dueler automatically the scales based on the real-time resource needs unnecessary nodes won't be provisioned and then evenly the node load will be distributed so you may see there will be some cost saving on number of node provision and rescheduled re so what you are waiting for start leveraging the dc dueler today and experience the benefit of balanced and efficient and cost effective kubernetes cluster please be noted before we try this just perform some kind of uh, proof of concept and understand more about your kubernetes cluster and take this call right so if you are facing any issues or something you may need to rework on it don't try this directly on the production first try on your multiple environment let's say like you are having a dev or staging environment and then test environment implement this practice it and see how efficiently it's managing enable some prometheus monitoring with a grafana dashboard or wherever what are the external metrics you can enable understand this tool on regular basis if you see this tool can be used for on the production side and this will be a very good tool to use it on the production side right so hope this video is useful guys we'll try to come, come with the more real-time scenarios or we'll try to expand this dc dueler features with the multiple examples in coming videos and we'll try to keep sharing to you guys so hope this video is useful guys if you see this is useful please share with your friends who is managing very large cluster and struggling to um, struggling to optimize the node utilization or they are ending up with the paying a huge number of um, uh, cost for their kubernetes cluster and don't forget to like and share and subscribe thank you for your time have a great day bye bye